My grandparents came from Holland to San Francisco in 1875. Grandma opened a little shop to sell buttons, needles, and thread. It later grew into the I. Magnin fashion stores. And grandmother Mary Ann Magnin's little button shop was already a thriving business when Cyril Magnin was born. The year was 1899. There were no bridges across San Francisco Bay. And Victorian homes, like Cyril's birthplace, still standing today, were built to survive even an earthquake. And during the 1906 earthquake, I can remember hiding underneath my bed. The quake and fire almost wiped out I. Magnin, but grandmother Mary Ann rebuilt later on refused to make Cyril's dad Joseph an executive of the company. He quit and opened his own Magnin store. Cyril transformed his father's business from a stodgy women's wear store to an upbeat youth-oriented bonanza that cashed in on the post-war years. He sold it in 1968, saw it go out of business in 83. It really shocked me. I think something that I spent so many years building and building and building. And suddenly have it just like breaking a glass, you know, with nothing left. Cyril Magnin loved politics. As a 21-year-old, he was an observer at the 1920 Democratic Convention in San Francisco. It could be described as a football game in a sense. Out of that convention came a young Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Cyril Magnin supported him for president much later on. He also raised money for Harry Truman, John F. Kennedy, and Lyndon Johnson. And in an appreciation of uh, this visit, Magnin was a successful businessman in 1967 when he was appointed to the Port Commission. He pushed for a controversial high-rise near the ferry building, a high-rise that public outrage finally stopped. He was active in the arts, underwrote performances of San Francisco's opera starring Beverly Sills, helped bring the American Conservatory Theater to San Francisco. It was because of his friendship with Anwar Sadat that we saw King Tut but it wasn't his proudest achievement. Well, actually, the thing I'm most proud of, and this is a very small thing, but was bringing the uh, Chinese exhibit to San Francisco, the archaeological exhibit. Cyril Magnin negotiated with Chinese officials two years, finally got them to permit the amazing display of archaeological finds to stop here in San Francisco. But Cyril Magnin's best known as the city's greeter, welcoming everything from steers to heads of state. Prince Charles here in 1977. Magnin virtually created the job of chief of protocol. He uses his own cash entertaining dignitaries. Many dignitaries he took to the beach blanket show and for seeing it 300 times, Cyril Magnin himself had his feet and hands pressed into the sidewalk. It was part of his secret ambition. To produce a musical on Broadway. And why didn't he do it? I don't have the ability, and I've never found anyone yet that I think has the ability. Though he never produced, he did perform, playing a cameo role as the Pope in the 1978 movie Foul Play. Although his name never went up in lights, it did appear on San Francisco's North 5th Street, renamed for Cyril Magnin in the mid-80s. <laughs> I don't know what I have left, really. Just to be, help this community, help the people of this community, and make myself useful wherever I can. Cyril Magnin lived in an art-filled mini penthouse at the Mark Hopkins Hotel. He said he loved women who had a zest for life and a terrific sense of humor. He was married twice, widowed once, divorced once. He has three children, Donald Magnin, Ellen Magnin Newman, and Jerry Magnin. Cyril himself could be like a kid posing in bed with columnist Herb Kane, and Charlotte Maillard, or riding the newly restored carousel in Golden Gate Park wearing a crown. I'd be 85 on the 6th of July, but I still feel as well as when I was a little boy. I've had an 83-year love affair with this city. Some people even call me Mr. San Francisco. I'm Cyril Magnum, and this is my dog, Tippy.